We've got starts of the week on today's episode. We're dealing with half of the week 14 matchups, and there's a lot of weather issues coming up this week. So make sure you subscribe right now. Click the subscribe before you watch the show so you can be alerted for Sunday Live so we can help you out this week. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. It's defense time. <laughs> it's man football. Real men. Real men score zero say points. Man football? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I mean, real men win three to zero. We do have a football game tonight. Unfortunately, no rain. Oh, man. I know. That would have really taken if this we, game down we, a notch. We could have got like some sleet. Actually, hey, Fulkland, this is important that you know. This is this is crazy. Don't tell these people. I'm telling the Don't people. Don't tell people what we've done. I'm telling the people what we've done so that they can root with us and we can enjoy Thursday Night Football tonight in the most important league, Champ, yeah. Champ, Champ yeah. League, that yeah. Mike and I co-manage a team uh, and are the defending back-to-back-to-back champions. We're playing for the bye. This is an important week for us. Yep. And we have four quarterbacks on our roster. Kyler, he's on bye. Yeah. Derek Carr, probably not going to play. Joe Burrow, he's done. And... Who else? Was well, someone else? But then we had yeah. to pick up the only guy left Mac, in a it dynasty. Was Mac Jones. Oh, Mac Jones. Yeah, uh, the only guy <laughs> left on waivers, Mitchell Trubisky, baby. Which and, you, hey, just admit you spent ninety five fab on him. No, we we had to have yeah. a quarterback, and we, that and, was, and we were correct because the entire league conspired against us. Everyone to add all the quarterbacks. People not involved. And it, we're adding quarterbacks, which I commend you I always for the move. I always enjoy most important league season for you guys. Yeah. Because yeah. that just means that you are not fighting me in my important leagues. Hmm. Yeah. Because you've moved past them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we have elevated beyond. Yeah, you've moved beyond. Yeah, you've moved to kind of like. We've ascended. Mm -hmm. We have reached nirvana. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, anyways, Footland, go Mitchell Trubisky. <laughs> root with us. It will what be. What could go There wrong? will be a football game tonight. <laughs> Pay no mind to the fact the over under is the lowest in decades. Uh, you said it's defense time. Yeah. I mean, the defense is going to have a lot of help from their offenses. I. We just need the Steelers' defense to get an interception and take the ball down to like the seven. Yeah. Would not you, too close. Not, no, 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 not no, too no. close. <laughs> Would you call a 16 to 15 game like exciting? Is that two tutties from Trubisky? I'm just asking. 16 15. Is that what you would normally classify as an exciting football game? No. That would that would hit the over. It uh, it it could. You can have an exciting low scoring game at the end of the game, sure. Yeah. Like the, the you well, know I'm the, saying like as long as there's as long as there's big plays and and fun things happening, you know. I would not expect either of you to appreciate a defensive battle in any capacity. Thank you. Because you also don't appreciate outdoor football. Thank you. Which, I mean, the real argument for outdoor football, to be fair, it's the fans in the stands that make it fun. Right. That's an experience. Sure. I, I, I will definitely admit that, like, for fantasy, it's awful. Right. You know what they should do? What? They should build a roof yeah. that has, like, an open yeah, ring yeah, yeah. around the state uh, around the stands. So, uh -huh. like, protect the players. Wait, so you're the over, uh, no rain yeah. straight down? But no the, rain on yeah. the fans field, get but the on? fans get just just Douse? snowed on yeah you know and what's what's great when you have a multi-billion dollar product cater it to like 0.0001 percent of the people who are watching the game mm, yeah that's that's good business have you guys considered petitioning for like maybe only letting four or five defensive players on the field I've thought about it. Yeah, I, I, I assume have. you have. I've thought about. It. I've uh, thought about less. I'd and what about like every touchdown? <laughs> every touchdowns were like five hundred points. No, see that's that's ridiculous. Yeah. What a stupid scoring is, The scoring of football is great. Yeah. Let's talk about the Megalo Bowl, the playoffs, Jason. You wanted to let people know what's going on. Yeah. So if you are playing in the Megalo Bowl, which I'm sure you are, if you're not, hopefully you get in next year. That is our humongous uh, megalodon-sized tournament. 
And the playoffs will be starting like all leagues this coming week, but there is a difference. Our waivers lock in this, so you need to be prepared, and I want to make sure everyone that is that is moving on to the playoffs knows you will not be able to make waiver transactions in the playoffs. So maybe pick up a backup quarterback if you so want, or your uh, your insurance running back, or someone Mitchell else's Tr insurance. Mitchell Trubisky. Or Mitchell Trubisky, you know, the hero uh, that we never saw coming. Um, the hero we need. And then if you're curious who makes the playoffs, Every single uh, league, the top three seeds in your league move on to the playoffs. You could find all the information, all the rules, all the scoring, every uh, the leaderboard at megalobowl.com. We try to make it very, very easy. We've got all the messaging up there, the alerts, um, but we want you to be aware and um, not caught off guard. Also, special shout out to the only undefeated Megalobowl team. Oh, is it me? No. Megahertz. Okay. Twenty six zero and zero. So, how many teams do do you know the count on the top of your head? How many teams mm. were in the league? Oh, in the league, around twenty thousand. Around twenty thousand. One undefeated team heading into, um, or nearly heading into the fantasy playoffs. And I'll so. bet he doesn't win it. <laughs> I'm gonna take the field. Well, I look. It's a good bet on the field. It won't be twenty thousand, but no. it'll be thousands. Uh, so check that out, megalobull.com for all the details. Don't say we didn't warn you, yeah. right? Isn't that part of this? That is part of this, and the winner is in our listener league next year. I will do my best to win it so that we open up another spot. Andy, you are doing your best to win our actual listener league so that you open up another spot for the Foot Clan. I'm working on it. Oh, it's good because I'm doing my worst. You're doing your, you're, you're thinking of the, uh, yeah, that's, the that's, eventual winner. Yeah, no, I, I. Otherwise, that I might told be. my team to lay down. <laughs> so that's the only reason. Only why. path to most important. It's the only reason it's not competitive right now. All right, let's jump into the news. News and notes from around the league, presented by USAA Insurance. Do we have some? Uh, hold on. Zach Wilson. Hey, that's our music. Zach Wilson has been announced as the starting quarterback this week and moving forward. I mean, it had to be done. Every, everything that the Jets have done right, with the, the players that they have mm -hmm. available, I believe everything that they have done needed to be done. Well, the second Tim Boyle start I don't think needed to happen. So pretty close. But the point being, Zach Wilson was an anchor upon this offense. It was not working out. You had to try something different. Just, I mean, if nothing else to, to satisfy some public pressure, you show them that your backup quarterbacks are not the answer, and now we put who is, I guess, the best option for them back in. The real way to do it would have been to play all their backups like one quarter at a time. Just go like one quarter, another quarter, another quarter, and then – they're done. It's like one game you prove to the fans that, no, Zach's actually the best we have. At what point would Brees Hall become their best quarterback? Like run a what, system. Miami system? Yeah, the, exactly. The old Wildcat? Exactly. Run a Wildcat system, run the ball all the time, little dump-offs over the line. I think they're trying to run it all the time. Ah, uh, that's true. They don't it's have an not offensive working. line. <laughs> the Saints updates, uh, injury-wise. Derek Carr limited at practice, remains in protocol, but uh, – it was being reported he was making every throw like there's a decent chance car plays. Taysom Hill did not practice foot and hand injuries. Uh, that goes to Wednesday's practice, so we – there's a little worry there with Taysom Hill. Yeah we'll, yeah, we'll see. Josh Dobbs gets the start for the Vikings. All right. Um, Justin Jefferson, full participant in practice. He's back. He – we will – you know, TBD what he can do with Josh Dobbs, but we've seen decent games for Hawkinson and Addison, and we know – Justin Jefferson is better, so he should probably be in most lineups. Isaiah Pacheco did not practice Wednesday, yeah. and what I didn't like is the comment from head coach Andy Reid saying he's being checked out by the team, as though there was maybe more to the story. So we'll we'll monitor that. Pacheco's been on fire. That would be a big loss. Yeah, a, a massive loss. But we get to say Clyde Edwards-Alaire over Johnny Taylor this week. So that's always fun. Oh man, I keep track of those. We're up. You're to just like, saying because, we're at like three, I think. Yeah, to, to explain that they were drafted together. Yeah, and so any week where Clyde is somehow the choice, yeah, Mike is rejoicing, or maybe, you know, it's a small bit of ointment on the 
burn of making the wrong selection. A very small bit. Yeah. Teeny you're, you're, tiny. You're putting Neosporin on a decapitation. <laughs> it's not going to help. Yeah. It's not going to make you feel good. <laughs> Eagles tight end Dallas Goddard expects to play this week. Full practice participant. Okay. Welcome back, Dallas Goddard. That's big. Would you start him, Andy? I know you at one point earlier this week thought like, yes, he should go right back in your lineup. Are you? Do you still feel that way? Like people who've been holding on to him haven't tied in trouble. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. That's a that's an of course this week against uh, Dallas. I I would. I mean, I thought about him as a start of the week before we got this announcement. The tight end, you know, it's tough in the tight end streets. We know. Sure. That. Dawson Knox, the twenty-one day window open for the Bills. Uh, I guess we could save it for the uh, the actual Eagles breakdown, but I wanted to talk about Devonta Smith with okay. with Goddard coming back. So we'll put a put a pin in that. All right, all right, A little tease there. Mike's got stuff to say. Hang in there; he'll say it later. Dawson Knox uh, could play this week. We'll see. Twenty-one day window open. So how you feeling about your Dalton Kincaid, Andy? Decent this week and slowly declining in optimism. Um, although I think when you have a player that's involved themselves as much as Kincaid, hopefully the snaps or the targets can be like there's a higher baseline than before the injury. Mm -hmm. But um, nervous, a little. I mean, really nervous actually. And yeah, it would be uh, Kyle has dug up some information, but it would be an upgrade for Stephon Diggs who has. Performed better when they are running 12 personnel. Darren Waller expects to return to practice next week. Hopes to play in week 15 against the Saints. Okay. Yeah, okay. Would you play him? No, not the first week back. This is a hamstring injury that he's re-aggravated already. Um, I, need to, I need to watch him play a full game. And uh, Najee Harris, questionable, but expected to play for tonight's game. And they already announced uh, Pop Douglas out. Devontae Parker questionable for the football game we're going to watch tonight. Go yep. Trubs. <laughs> Team Go. Trubs. Team Trubs. Team Trubs is in Trubs. <laughs> nah. That, Des Destiny, Mike. That was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at USAA.com slash insurance. Fantasy Forecast. The final two buys. Cardinals, Commanders, not playing football this week. Everybody else is. Starting with the 5-7 and seven Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Traveling to take on the 6-6 six and six Atlanta Falcons. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, Atlanta minus one. Over-unders 39.5. We had a pretty impressive couple of weeks from Bijan against Arizona and New Orleans last week. Expected more from his matchup against the Jets. He was just 2.9 a carry. I think it was one of his uh, worst games of the year on the ground efficiency-wise. Um, but you're you're obviously playing Bijan. Expectations should still be high. Tyler Algier had his season low in snaps last week. Yeah, I, I, I think Bijan is someone that you've got to start, but this isn't a good matchup. Schedule adjusted. The Buccaneers are second against the run, and they're really bad against wide receivers, so th this is a pass funnel defense. Thankfully, Bijan is a very good pass catcher, so hopefully he gets involved and gets the targets. That's where his fantasy day is going to be fine. If he doesn't get those, he probably doesn't get much on the ground, and Tyler Algier is not someone you can obviously play. What about the wide receiver matchup for Drake London? In all but three games this year, you would have been unhappy to have played him. Uh, obviously, he's a capable receiver. We haven't seen the target numbers up where they were earlier in the year. Any confidence in playing Drake London this week? Yeah, I, I do. I, I do. this is this is a matchup we've been targeting. Uh, the Bucks, twenty eighth on the season, adjusting for points for the wide receiver position, and 29th in the last six weeks. So the the trend has does not betray the season total, and I think that Drake London is a fine flex play this week. He was six for fifty four against these Buccaneers in week seven. Mm -hmm. Um, if you got that, you wouldn't. It wouldn't kill yeah, your I mean, week. That's that's, a, that's fine for a flex. Yeah, and two weeks ago he was five for ninety one, which was very good. Last week was the Jets. You're not going to expect right. wide receivers to do great against the Jets. I think you forgive that. This is a good matchup, and it's worth noting. 
I know all the, you strong men out there will be upset, but it's in a dome. And this week, <laughs> this week's um, weather is worse than last week's. A lot of rain and, more importantly, a lot of wind. So you've got you've got some matchup worries to keep in mind this week. So I think Drake London is completely in play, and like you said, you'd be happy three times, I think probably four times this season that you've played him. I think this week will be another happy moment. On the other side of the ball, Rashad White is a lock, of course. He's the RB6 on the year. His he, opportunities are always there. He is. He's up against it this week. It's a tough matchup for running backs, but Rashad White is kind of their second-best wide receiver. I mean, Mike Evans, he's a lock. White. You just play him. Mm -hmm. um, I would be curious uh, when they play it earlier in the season. I'm looking that up. So ATL, he was 19 opportunities, 13 for 34 on the ground. Gross. Six, Gross. six for 65 but through six, the year. That's yeah. where it is. That's where the – You can't look at him like a straight exactly. running Exactly. That, that's where Rashad White is – he is, again, I think he's still up against it, but he should catch, what, four four plus passes? Mike Evans, averaging 84 receiving yards per game. He's a lock. Anybody else that you're interested in? I mean, Chris Godwin hasn't been in top 36 wideout since week seven. He caught a touchdown last week, thank goodness, but no. I'm uh, he, he has not proven anything from just simply catching a touchdown. He's been bad all year. I don't think you start him. This, is, this matchup's pretty simple. It's Mike Evans, Rashad White, Bijan, and then I believe Drake London. Mike and I believe Drake London. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, Detroit, nine and three, taking on the four and eight Chicago Bears. Uh, I'm going to make Jason the weatherman today. Sound the alarm on some of these. DraftKings Sportsbook line: Detroit minus three and a half. The over/under is forty three and a half. Uh, it's been bet down to forty and a half, and then back up to forty three and a half. So I don't know if that is literally like someone's watching the Doppler. <laughs> it, it, it could be. I think there's a lot of concerns about weather this weekend. Uh, right now, and obviously this this any weather we're giving you on Thursday for Sunday is subject to change. But make sure you pay attention to Sunday Live with Mike. Uh, subscribe to this so that you get the alert, the notification. Um, you know when when we go live. That's on YouTube. Yeah, on on YouTube. Um, and then um, but this this looks like there won't be rain right now. It's six percent chance of of rain, uh, but thirteen mile an hour winds. That should be okay. Like I I don't. I don't look at this as one where you've got to worry too much about the weather. It is interesting, I think, that the line is just Detroit minus three and a half. I, I for a nine and three team that's that's played pretty well. Obviously, they jumped all over the Saints, survived last week. You know, I guess I'm a little surprised that line is not bigger. Really? I, uh, I mean, divisional game on the road, and the Lions even they are nine and three. They can be a great team, but they can also be. Just really mid. These two teams played a couple weeks ago. The Lions did win, but only by five points, and they were at home. So I think the 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 line makes sense. And honestly, the Chicago Bears defense has looked much improved. I, I think that they are not just a dumpster fire the way that they have been over the last few seasons. I don't look at the Bears as some smash matchup for my uh, uh, opponents across the board anymore. Gave up only 10 points to Minnesota. Um they did give up 31 to these Lions that two weeks ago, like you mentioned. Jared Goff, how are you feeling about Goff this week on the road in Chicago? About yeah. as, about the way you always feel about Jared Goff, yeah. like it should go right, but you also know it's he Jared. likes to slip on banana peels from time to time. And throw interceptions directly to uh, opposing players. It, he's fine. He's a top twelve quarterback. Is that considered an efficient interception? If you throw it directly, <laughs> right to the right to the opposing, yeah, like the most or, efficient interception throw in the I league. I did not make him work for this. Right. I mean, it probably feels better than when the wide receiver tips it. I like because the they get to do the thing where they run out the field. Like, oh no, that was that's my bad, guys. I was the one who threw the ball directly because oh, they defender. get to tap their yes. chest yes. and yeah. say that's make on me you feel worse no no because it's like look i made a mistake but i owned that mistake so you don't get to say crap to me i like the idea of a player realizing that they on average throw an interception every you know like 65 pass attempts and when they reach when they're getting close mm. they just get it out of the way yeah uh, I'll re reset the timer they want to reset the timer <laughs> that's it that's about like, how fantasy players look at the sport like days since accident <laughs> yeah yeah he's just like i'm gonna get it out of the way yeah um David Montgomery, Jameer Gibbs. Yeah, playing both. Both. 
you play them both. Where, where are you in terms of uh, which which running back between the two is going to make a bigger fantasy impact in the playoffs? Fantasy um, playoffs in the fantasy playoffs. Yeah, what's your what's your gut? My gut is that David Montgomery is going to be the more consistent guy. Um, have more touchdowns. You know, we saw. Uh, we we've we've seen it both ways, right? Last year with DeAndre Swift and Jamal Williams, we saw Jamal Williams be a top ten running back because when they get inside the five, they get the touchdowns. We have seen Jameer Gibbs more involved inside the five. I know one of those was it was called to be David Montgomery. We and call David, it a courtesy, right? And David Montgomery's like, "Hey, you want this? You want this? You hey, go little get bro." It. But we've also seen him called uh, the Jameer Gibbs number called inside the five now since that point. So. Um, I think it's pretty close, 55-45, but I still lean the David Montgomery side for consistency. I, I think he has a um, – I think he ha just has more touchdowns. Okay. Um, what are we doing? And it's a revenge game this week. So. Sure. Are we doing anything with the Bears running backs? Deonta Foreman was a full practice on Wednesday. He had been their workhorse running back, a pretty successful fantasy running back while Khalil Herbert was hurt. I don't Herbert was coming back. It looked like it was still going to be Foreman at least for a little bit, and then Foreman, of course, got hurt. And then and then Roshan looked great, uh, went out, played 74% of the snaps, was the running back 21 in a victory. Like, Roshan was starting to really excite me as, as a waiver wire pickup, and then with Deonta Foreman practicing in full, it's like, ah, well, I could see Deonta Foreman coming out and just being given back the starting role that he was succeeding at, and I could see Roshan, uh, Roshan having that role. I I don't think you could play any bear unless you know someone at the organization <laughs> who can tell you who is the starter. I, I it could be any of those three guys. I would order it Yeah, that's Roshan yeah. Herbert Foreman just because he's coming back from the injury, but I don't know. It's, yeah, I mean it, they're a schizophrenic team as a whole. And then you add in multiple running back options. DJ Moore you play. Oh yeah. Amon Ra you play. Yeah. You want to take a a chance? Do you go? Let me let me bring Jameson Williams' name up. Obviously, a very explosive player, one of the fastest in the game. You saw him on the end around touchdown last week. It was the only play of relevance for him in that game. He barely um, had opportunities. Now he's out on the field over fifty percent of the time. Would you play him and the boom potential, uh -huh. or would you play the actual? Opposite, like if you looked up the opposite of Jamison Williams in a book, Robert Woods for the Houston Texans with Ooh. the absence of Tank Dell at this point. I would lean towards oh, no, Woods. Houston's is, playing the yeah the, the Jets. Jets. Well, I was I was gonna go Woods until I'll, I remember the I'm matchup. I'm gonna go Woods still. Uh, I'll go Jamison Williams. Hope for the upside. However, a very very similar. I think a you know if you're looking if you're wanting to play Jamison Williams, it's because you're looking for a high potential boom option that maybe can hit and be something relevant going forward so let me ask you Jamison Williams or Jalen Hyatt another similar archetype player coming off uh you know uh, the buy where you see that post buy rookie bump maybe I'm fine I think they're very similar um both of them I like more than Woods just in the fact that if a game script goes a certain direction like one play gets you per, uh gets you a full allotment of like output in fantasy, whereas Robert Woods is not going to do that on one play. I guess I lean Hyatt a little bit. Um, I think I do as well. But they're they're very similar. Both run, both tight ends very much in play this week. Laporta is a stone-cold lock. You could probably lock him in your lineup now and then like set the expiration of that lock for about 10 years because I think like he's going to be that kind of a tight end. And then Cole Komet, uh, great opportunity for him. We'll see if Justin Fields can get it going this week. It's been a bit slow for him as a passer since coming back from the injury. Yeah, yeah. I, I think most people are, if you've got Komet, you're going to be starting him. All right, let's take a quick break, and we'll come back with the Colts Bengals. <music> Indianapolis, 7-5. and five. Traveling to Cincinnati to take on the Bengals, who are 6-6 six and six at this point. The DK Sportsbook line, Indy, minus one on the road. The over-under is 44 points. And here we are. Um, what's interesting is that before Monday Night Football, this game line was 40.5. 
and Jake Browning's performance in that game altered the line significantly. That's a huge move. Yeah, and it and it is indicative of like, you know, I think the ceiling rose for all of the Cincinnati Bengals fantasy options. Like I don't think people went into Monday night not expecting Jamar Chase to have that performance, not expecting Joe Mixon to have that performance, not expecting Jake Browning certainly to go 32 for 37. So, you know, from a fantasy perspective, this game is exciting because Indianapolis games are generally jam-packed with fantasy production. Yeah. A lot of opportunities for both offenses. Only four times this year has Indy not hit the over. Um, so this is, you know, a, a game you expect a good back-and-forth affair. I'm really, really, like, all eyes this week are going to be on Jake Browning because is he banana ramming banana <laughs> us with one performance that just looks like, oh, man, he's got it? You know, it's really hard with a guy like Jake Browning that we've seen um, struggle already, play poorly, and then have that kind of performance to just buy in completely and say, well, that is who he is now. Um, I need back-to-back -back performances before I'm completely convinced, but I am, I'm excited. He, he looked fully legit. Did you know that that was their highest yardage total of the season? More than any game that they oh. had with Joe Burrow? Yeah. I did not know that. I would it's, not have expected it's that. It's impressive. I mean, Burrow, re remember the season. Burrow was awful sure. to begin the year, and then we really only had a just a few games where it was like, okay, Burrow is back. Okay. Uh, Gardner, a couple of good weeks. Yeah, I mean, you good, not great. Yep, you can stream him, though. Throws the ball a ton. Michael Pittman is a PPR lock. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My guy, Zach Moss, I know he had a bad <laughs> week last week, but – when you're that good, you lock them in. Yeah, and the, they, and the matchup is 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 actually good. Tennessee last week, uh, sometimes you know you you brought it up. I think yesterday, Andy. It's like sometimes Tennessee comes and just shuts down running backs. Sometimes they've given up big performances. You you kind of never know which version of their defense is arriving. But um, the 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 Bengals defense has pretty much been subject to assault from running backs for most of the season. <laughs> Um. All right. Uh, so, what are the questionable plays here? T. Higgins and Josh Downs. Yeah, I think that's fair. Uh, let's start with T. Higgins. So, we've laid out the the offensive output. You kind of want pieces of this game. Three targets, seventy eight percent of the snaps. Uh, I don't. I don't know that I'd want to force T. Higgins in. Let me give you guys some some names here. So let's go T. Higgins. Or uh, let's say let's start at Jaden Reed against the Giants. Good yeah. matchup. I'm gonna stick with Jaden Reed. Uh, I'll play Higgins. Okay, Higgins or Deon. I mean, it's it's quick because it's tonight. But Deontay Johnson against the Pats tonight. Higgins. Uh, yeah, I would go Higgins. All right, and then I'll give you one more. It's probably not. I don't know if Andy's in, but Elijah Moore. I'm out. You're Higgins. out? Higgins. Higgins. Okay. Yeah. Right. Um, I feel like my, my position on Elijah Moore is that he needs 62 targets to reach a normal output of and fantasy he, production. He, he might get 62 targets this week. <clears throat> I don't know. Did we mention that Amari Cooper is progressing through the – He's still in concussion Concussion protocol. protocol. As is DTR. He's been practicing, which is a good sign for his availability. He has not cleared concussion protocol yet, but – it is worth noting that he's not practicing with the ones, though. Yeah, Joe that, Flacco is practicing with the he ones. Is. I at at this point, I expect it will be Flacco this week. Josh Downs has only caught eight of eighteen targets the last two weeks. It, you know he's he's in for me. The, the volume is there. It's been uh -oh. rough, man. Jay One for ten, groaning. two for forty, five for forty-three. Yeah, I guess been, there were some injuries in those. I've two been games. playing them, and and it hasn't been but feeling very. I'm good. okay with Josh Downs. I'd play him over Deontay. Yeah, I, I would as well. Um, hopefully the weather is okay. Right now it looks like 32% chance of rain and about 13, 14 mile an hour winds. So this is just one of those, like a lot of these uh, more East Coast or, or Midwest uh, stadium games, you've got to pay attention and make changes on Sunday based on the weather. All right, let's uh, turn the page. Jacksonville 8-4 and four, taking on the aforementioned Joe Flacco, 
potentially led Cleveland Browns. Seven and five. The Browns are seven and five. The DraftKings Sportsbook line. Oh gosh. Yeah, we're giving tonight's game a run for the money. It's Thirty and a half. That's called C.J. Beathard v. Joe Flacco. And Cleveland minus three weather. and a half. Th this oh, we one, got a weather game Yeah, this one is looking bad. 17-mile-an-hour winds expected, 60% oh. uh, chance of rain. So it, Gusts at 25. Yeah, anytime you get above 15-mile-an-hour winds, that's where the passing game is very, very difficult. You'll see them run the ball more. Um, you know, you, you could have a, a good Jerome Ford game, a good Travis Etienne game maybe, but uh, – you what don't you, expect a lot of points here, and you don't really, you don't want to put in your receiving options in a game like this if they're questionable. Like, you know, Zay Jones, uh, Elijah Moore, those are guys that on a normal week I'd be like, yeah, may, maybe, maybe, maybe they're going to be okay. They're a spot start, but you add in the weather, and you're just making bets on probability. I would bet that it's not, it doesn't go well for fantasy for them. Yeah, I think you can play Jerome Ford. I, I did have a funny. Um, insight yesterday, I, I went back and I looked at our league of record draft board from before the season. And I wrote a note on my whiteboard because we do our 10 things to remember. And for this year, at least, like any running backs late were awful. And Jerome Ford was one of the few diamonds to be found, like in a list, like before Jerome Ford, Bigsby. Yeah. Jamal Williams, Deion Jackson, Jarek McKinnon, Kendra Miller, Rashad Penny, Ty Chandler, Tyler Algier, Elijah Mitchell, Jeff Wilson. Those are all players that went before Jerome Ford. Yeah, and, you're just searching for the – you're just taking some, some scratchers in case there's but an I, injury. That, that's not – it wasn't that late in our draft is my point. Oh, this okay. was just gotcha. like beyond the big names of the draft. These were the scratchers people were taking, and it, I just read you all failures. So the, minus Jerome Ford, and he is one that has actually produced. He is, but he was the beneficiary of the yeah, major yeah. injury. So. And he is so bizarre to me because looking back, I mean, he has been very capable for fantasy here. You know, the last five games, averaging double digits in a half point scoring format, but the. <clears throat> His opportunities seem to be going down. Like last week was, uh, if you remember, it was the the twenty four yard receiving touchdown. That was a little bit of a fluky play because other if if that and yes it happened. It's playing the game of take a play away. But other than that, he was atrocious against the Rams. Nine for nineteen on the ground. Uh, some other guys like uh, Pierre Strong getting more involved on on uh, passing downs. So I. I have my concerns with Jerome Ford. I don't know that in the landscape that those are enough to take him out of a starting roster. He's he's a low end RB two, so he's probably going to still be have him and, and RB two ish. I mean, he's the running back twenty on the season, and that's about what he finishes almost every single week. Didn't he have like three straight weeks with the exact same fantasy points or something? Uh, I don't remember that, but I mean, I could tell you. I'm looking at his box scores. He was the running back 14, 23, 17, 23, 17. Bad week, ten, twenty two. He's just always like. He's not great. He's not winning you a week, but when you're needing someone that's going to go out there and score 10 points at the running back position and have PPR scoring, he seems to get the job done. There there has I mean, Kareem Hunt is not practicing. So oh, that's okay. worth mentioning. Yeah, like it is. He, the groin injury for Kareem Hunt. Ah! He's only played 35% uh, of snaps, 26% of snaps. Maybe it's not that significant if Strong's getting worked in. But worth paying attention to. Amari Cooper still in protocol. If Amari Cooper's available, it, it, it would seem he's a good start against a yes. weak Jaguars wide receiver defense. It's part of why I, I, I'm anticipating that Cooper to be out because of the history of this year has been far more often than not a concussion Although, knocks a guy out for a week. But last the, week we just saw Chris Olave play. Yeah, no, I, I'm saying, the, but the majority of players have, when there's been a concussion, they've missed at least a week. A few outliers have, have gotten back in. But the matchup against this Jags team, part of Browning's success last week was the fact that this defense has little interest in stopping the passing game. So <laughs> Elijah Moore with Joe Flacco, without Cooper to me, is a – I think there's some some real upside. Real real downside as well, but, but actual upside. 
David Njoku, uh, last week was not the one that ended up with the big numbers at tight end. It was Harrison Bryant, but he did have six targets. I still think there should be optimism around him. Obviously, Vegas doesn't see Trevor Lawrence playing. It's an uphill battle for Lawrence. Potentially doesn't see Cooper playing. Um, you have injuries uh, on both sides of the ball, so that's the landscape. It's a risky game with an over-under like that. Cleveland is favored. They are at home. And um, in, in this in this wind, I I don't believe I'm playing any Jaguar receiver. I'm not gonna play if, if Trevor Lawrence isn't there. C.J. Beathard against a good uh, yeah, Denzel Ward's Browns, practicing by the way. A good Cleveland Browns defense. Cleveland has played much much better at home as well in bad weather. Like it, C.J. Beathard's throwing for 125 yards. I'm not splitting that up with my pass catchers. Um, so Travis Etienne is in. And then that's that's it for me on the Jag side. No, ETN Ingram is the end. I think I would look elsewhere from for Ingram. Are you if, forgetting the super weather game where Ingram? Oh yeah, like, yeah it was baby. Where the, that was, was his game of it was the bench year. Everybody, which was one hundred percent right. correct. Yeah. Well, ninety nine percent correct because Evan Ingram had a dominant. I'm, I'd game. play Ingram in this game. I, I yeah, I don't mind that. Close to the line of scrimmage, the dump yeah. offs, the only passes that are going to work. That's that is fair. That game last year. I'm looking this up, uh, that was when Evan Ingram had 15 targets, was 11 for 162 and two, and no other player did anything. Let, let, let's just throw one more thing out there. If Lawrence was activated, would it change your opinion on Zay Jones and yes. Calvin Ridley? Uh, yes. I'd probably incorrectly put Ridley into my lineup <laughs> if Trevor Lawrence was active. So I hope he is. he makes it easy on us. Heal up. All right, the Carolina Panthers are 1-11, and and they travel to New Orleans what? to take on the reeling New Orleans Saints, who got booed last week. Five and seven, three straight losses. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, New Orleans minus five. The over-under is 37 and a half. Did you? Oh. Andy's almost upset of the week. I, I don't hate it. I don't hate it. Did you follow the Michael Thomas drama? Uh, I know he tweeted some things about Derek Carr. Yeah, he tweeted that. I, I don't remember the exact, so I'm paraphrasing, but essentially it was, when your eyes don't work, you get players hurt. Yeah, mm. I I watched. Um, Which we've had multiple receivers getting hurt, because seemingly looking like because it was a bad pass. Yeah, the the uh, I did a, a deep dive on New Orleans kind of situation this past week. I there I listened to a ten minute interview with Alvin Kamara, and he was really candid, and he was definitely secretly saying the problem is with the coaching staff. Ooh, but mostly just saying like I love our locker room, I love our players. <laughs> okay, you see what I'm saying? Like he, yeah, and he's yeah, a, yeah, he's yeah. such a um like he's a good interview. He always has been. Um, was yeah. he like, I miss Sean Payton? <laughs> yeah, not quite, but he did talk about Michael Thomas's comments. He's like, I know how that guy ticks. He's like, if he wants to put that stuff out there, that's cool. Like, it is what it is. I mean, at this point, Kamara is – he's a lock every week. He's playing great football. He's the RB9 on the year despite missing three weeks with the uh, suspension. You know, Kamara is a player that can win people championships uh, if, if the – Ball bounces the right way. Oh, for sure. I mean, so far on the course of the season, he hasn't finished outside of an RB2 a single time. He's only finished as an RB2, not an RB1, three of his games. He's been outstanding. The uh, You know, it's a divisional game. One of the reasons I'm making it my almost upset, Carolina um, played more competitively, tried some new things last week. They, they only lost by three points to these Saints when they were at home in week two. I, I just I don't know the Saints are just kind of reeling and the the chance that Derek Carr doesn't play or if he plays gets knocked out and if he gets knocked out is Jameis Winston there's just some you know they should win they should win by a billion points at home against Carolina but should. three straight yeah. weeks of implosions for this team you know they they have injuries Taysom Hill might not even be available it's just not a good vibe for really either of these teams with the Saints are are reeling yeah, so I think the question becomes, you know, on on the Panther side of the ball, does that mean can you play anyone with confidence? Uh, Chuba 
RB11, RB6 the last two weeks. It, with the new coaching staff, Miles Sanders, who was being involved, you know, was getting like 14, 15 carries a game. He was the backup to Chuba, and it was Chuba's, uh, you know, show. Over the last six weeks, you know, the, the Saints have not been good at stopping the run. They're 25th, giving up o over 20 fantasy points a game to the running back position. I feel like Chuba is a decent it's a Chuba RB2. Lock. It's a Chuba lock. A you Chuba. play Chuba. Wow. I'm okay with it. It's the first ever Chuba lock. Um, <laughs> but that's it. Yeah, you you can't start Adam Thielen or Mingo? Well, you can do you can do whatever you want, man. <laughs> but you, I, but you hope that you don't have there's to. There's no rule. It's a terrible matchup for the wide receivers. It's um, a, a roulette of sadness at, in Carolina at wide out. So, you know, I'm paying attention to Mingo. Like yeah. Mike mentioned at the beginning of the week, like he plays every down. He's a stash for the weekend. He just – just don't jump every time you catch the football. Yep. It, so are we – it feels a little gross to ask, but is Olave a must-play still? Yeah. He is to me, for sure. Yeah. Okay. There's, yeah. It's really tough defense here. Uh, the Panthers third against wide receivers when adjusting for points – or for schedule. Again, this is like the Texans last year where it's not that the defense is great. It's that you don't usually need to throw the ball. You just keep running the ball. It's easy okay. to run. You've got a lead. So that's why Kamara is a absolute uh, great play. But well, I'm saying like if – Olave seven straight games of eight or more targets. If somehow it is Derek Carr, does that change your – No, either, nope. no. either right. way. Jameis or Derek Carr, okay. Olave's locked in. Yeah. Uh, do we know if Rashid Shahid will be available? I see a questionable. I play. doubt it. Um, Olave or Puka this week? Puka, um, Olave, 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 Olave. Uh, Puka is um, in Baltimore. With his injury. He's he's fine. He said he's got no problem. <laughs> well, I, yeah, I know. It's just he's a good. flesh wound. Uh, but oh. but the the weather is terrible in Baltimore. So this is uh, that's that's a game with 19 mile an hour sustained winds, probable rain. Bad weather, oh, great defense stinks. on the road. Puka maybe. is – Puka is – Are you saying maybe to the weather? Yeah, I'm saying maybe to the weather. All sure, right. sure, sure. Maybe. Yeah. Check back on Sunday. Little maybe. Um, if Taysom misses Juwan Johnson goose last week, that probably was, not worth the gamble. That was so disappointing. Yeah, probably not worth the dance. And yeah. then uh, I think I think we're done talking there. Yep. I hope so. I don't think we have any more. Olave or Sutton? Sutton. <laughs> That's Houston, right? No, that was last week. Who does uh, Chargers. Chargers? Chargers, thank you. Yeah, it's juicy. Oh man. Yeah, uh, let's just. You guys just want to. You guys just want to like have a moment here and accept Cortland Sutton into the. Oh, I. You just want to. Do you I, just want to accept him into I the have, universe? I. You accepted him before it was. Yeah. It's okay. My all my comments about Cortland Sutton just are. He really hurt me. <laughs> Well, Personally, look, last year. Let's be clear: the dude makes three or four ridiculously stupid plays every week. Yeah, but he was doing that last year, except not having the, the cool plays. the one to two great plays. Yes, yes. All right, Houston at seven and five take on the New York Jets, four and eight. This is the game we would be talking about having a horrible over under if there weren't two other games. But DraftKings sportsbook line: Houston minus three and a half on the road. The over under is thirty three and a half. Oh yeah. All right. 33. Now uh, we're now we're talking. It looks like <laughs> You ever had two in one week? Andy's <laughs> almost upset of the week. Sorry. Oh, parley, man. parley, parley, parley. You <laughs> are betting on Zachary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't blame you at all. The Jets are at home. You lost Tank Dell. The weather is another terrible weather game right now. 84% chance of rain. 19 mile an hour sustained winds during the game. Like that's the current projection. So if it if it you know if the meteorologists are correct and the weather is that bad and you have a great defense, I I love CJ Stroud. He's awesome. What do you call people that study meteors? Uh that would be well, yeah. Whoa! Right? I don't, I don't think anyone right? devotes their entire no. life. Whoa. To How dare you? Years. Somebody but has I'm on to. It. But I'm on it. That's Astro something. So the the meteorologist. I'm just oh man! Yeah, I, I don't know why. Jason's mind I don't got know why blown. weather people are meteorologists. I'm just 
Throw what are what there. are people who study meat called? Uh, Al, do you have an answer here? It looks like it's a meteoriticist. Oh, I stand corrected. So, so there are people who focus just on meteors. A meteoriticist. <laughs> that <laughs> feels weird to say. I'm not saying that. Sorry, right. sorry. That was a yeah. Meteoritics is a science that deals with meteors, and those people are meteorist meteoriticists. Yeah. What are they? what are they again? <laughs> meteoriticists. That's actually that's why no one does it. Oh, just because they couldn't tell their yeah, friends what like, they do. Oh, hey, what do you do? I'm a meteorologist. Oh, I study meteors. <laughs> space, oh, so you're a meteorologist? Space rocks. No, I'm not a meteorologist. <laughs> I'm a meteorologist. <laughs> what if they were called weathermen? Yeah, seriously. A, let, we- let, a weatherologist. Let the meteorologists have meteorologists. Just give them that yeah. so that they can do their job better. Yeah, what's wrong That's with weatherologists? Sorry, yeah. Yeah, weatherologist. What do you do? I'm a weatherologist. Oh, you study the weather. Okay. Leave Sorry. Me. I'm a meteorist. I just, when I see problems in the world, I need to bring hey, them up. I love it. That's what we're here for. And it was during this game. So the Texans and the Jets and the weather and CJ Stroud doesn't have Tank Dell anymore. And it's a brutal matchup for whiteouts. I mean, the the Jets, week in and week out, ruin wide receiver production. And so when you're yeah. looking at pivoting from they don't ruin running backs though. So what do you do? Uh, what do I mean, I have to make this Pop choice. Quiz hot shot. <laughs> Daniel Singleton. Pierce or Devin well, Singleton. Let me finish my thought on Houston's okay, wideouts, sorry, which sorry. is that I would normally be looking forward to trying Noah Brown out or Robert Woods, and I'm not doing it this week against the Jets. I'm just gonna watch from the sideline. I'll play Nico Collins because come on. You gotta play him the way he's pl- producing. And I'd and I'd play the tight end that plays if Schultz is healthy or if it's Brevin. At at running back, I play Damian Pierce. I mean, over Singletary. Okay. That's the, that's my answer to the question. Yeah, the, the I don't like it. The snaps were in Singletary's favor, but the opportunities were in Pierce's favor. Just how you want it. <laughs> Keep them guessing, Houston. This is it's a problem. It really is, and and that's why I'm going to play Pierce. I hope that. Pierce takes over the backfield. I think that's a possibility. Like, that could happen. Sure. If he starts running well, and this is a good matchup against the run, like we've said. Is it 22 fantasy points a game they give up? What if I told you he has not run well all year? No, I know. I know. Goodness And they gracious. lost an offensive lineman again, but... Oh, he's three a carry. He's averaging three a carry. What, is this Brees Hall? <laughs> he, is, he is sub three... In, I know. in games many times. No, a lot of a lot of times. Well, I didn't, and, and I didn't realize it was that bad. Singletary's 4.1, and he was better last week on the ground but doesn't get the goal line. But he does sometimes get targeted. So I'm back to Singletary. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> the answer is I don't know. Yes. The answer is I do not know what they're going to do whatsoever. I loved it when Pierce was sidelined was, and was Singletary healing. was locked. Yeah, those were good games. Are you benching C.J. Stroud? Low over under, yeah. bad weather. Yeah, I I think that there are uh, better options this week. I know C.J. Stroud is you gotta awesome. have you gotta visit the Smith to bench C.J. Stroud because it's like okay, I'll give Russell Wilson. Yeah, I would play uh, Wilson. That, would, that one easily seem, yeah, play Russell. Wilson. That seems like the easy one. Uh, I play Jordan Love. Oh yeah, yeah, that one seems easy too against the Giants. I'm so, picking them. I'm picking them easy. I would Joshua, say Dak Prescott. Joshua. <laughs> You're bold, you're bold, Jay. Thanks. Joshua Dobbs against the Las Vegas Raiders with Justin Jefferson back. Sure. Or or, or rookie of the year, CJ Stroud. Although Dobbs could just get benched. I'll go Stroud there. Gardner Minshew against the Bengals. Yeah, I'll play Minshew. Oh, oh gosh. Yeah. I said it, that it, out loud. That feels, was Jason that said that. It feels weird. It's I, me, Jason. <laughs> I, I said that. It was me. Um, hmm. Okay. Yeah, I mean th- those those are the Baker. Or, those I'm are sorry. the choices. Those are the choices. Geno Geno Smith off of a really hot game against the Dallas Cowboys, uh, but he plays on the road against the 49ers. Hey, it's me. I'm asking. No, the, the, <laughs> weather, the, the weather is good. The weather is good over there. I think uh, Geno's played well. I I lean. Gino. I, I've got an answer. I really do. I have an answer. It's, Your answer is wake up Sunday morning and look at the weather. No, my answer is that if you. Like, I don't think C.J. Stroud will kill you in this game. I don't think he has upside potential. If you're a favorite with C.J. Stroud, keep playing him. If you need more, 
then the quarterback 15 on the week or the quarterback 13 on the week play somebody with more upside. Gardner last week wasn't that bad and had like five mistakes in the red zone in that game where it could have been much higher. Like I think Gardner has a higher ceiling this week. I, I see what you're saying. Like uh, Jameis Winston, if you sure. need. If he was starting. Sure, yeah. Sure, yeah. yeah. Not if he's not starting, Jason. I would agree with that. Yeah, that's downside. Brees Hall didn't practice due to an ankle. Is this? Do we have any updates on that? Yeah, Questionable. We'll didn't practice Wednesday. Wednesday. We'll go Wednesday. When, give him a break. Let me check uh, last week's. Could his yards per carry go down if his ankle's a little sore? I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so. Can either. we get this game? Just give the ball to Brees, and then give the ball to Damian Pierce and see. Oh, like what happens for science? Punt, 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 yeah. punt, 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 punt. Let's break some records. I do like Garrett Wilson in this game. I'm okay with it. Okay. Um, I I think with the return of Zach Wilson, I I can live with uh, Garrett Wilson against a bottom third pass defense. The matchup is at home. Very very good. Garrett Wilson is very very talented, and sometimes we overblow the weather. Um, you know, I think Garrett Wilson's probably someone you need to start. Same with Nico Collins. He's been too good to bench him. Just because of weather, <laughs> Kyle is sharing. Yeah, go ahead and share sharing that. a tweet here. What is this source here? Okay, so it's uh, uh Zach Rosenblatt. Oh, these from, are back to back fun ones from the Athletic. Nathaniel Hackett said Zach Wilson had two weeks off to quote uh, to center himself and said the goal this season was always for him to sit and watch, and he finally got to do that. Wow, achieving goals. Great job. Also said, I'm going to have more fun than I've ever had. Says so Zach Wilson. Dude, the ball is going to be sprayed across the field. Just <laughs> flying. He's going to have so much fun in that rain. This is what I'm talking about. There's a there's a chance that he just gets lucky. Mike's face says that there isn't. Yeah, I, there's a, there is a chance. All right, the Brees Hall question. You just play him, right? Yeah, you just play him. Uh, he has the opportunities coming his way and the long speed in a game that they're probably going to be handing the ball off a lot. It hasn't been great lately, but you're still talking about 21 opportunities, 16 opportunities, 16 opportunities, 20 opportunities, 21 opportunities. He's getting the ball. We've seen several huge plays this year when he has been you know, four times as a top 10 running back on the week. This isn't just like he's been really, 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 really disappointing on the ground with his efficiency, but his total fantasy finishes are still okay. You you, you still start Brees Hall. Um, have you guys seen the, uh, we didn't mention it in the news, but have you seen the Brandon Staley hinting at changes for the running back room? No, I, I saw you him, haven't seen this. Jason? I saw him talking what? about Joshua Kelly. Yeah, yeah. He he's basically come out and said that um, he can see he he's can hinting see Austin at Eckler he's too? hinting at competition for carries. He says it's something that you can see happening. We're going to keep exploring, making adjustments, see if we can find that rhythm I've been talking about, and that is one way to do it. Oh man, I'm so sorry, Austin. He's hurt. He's I, then not I'm, necessarily. He's hurt or he's lost it. Yeah, I mean, those two generally are morphed, I guess, at the back half of a running back's career. Well, I just, Staley I, said, we know that Austin is a good running back. We just haven't found any rhythm in the last couple of weeks in the run game. He just hasn't been good the last few weeks. I, I honestly do think it's related to him trying to recover from the ankle sprain. Yeah, but I not, mean, that, that doesn't whether, 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 it whether doesn't it help this year. I mean, it he's just doesn't matter the reason right now. He's playing bad, so it's sad i'm rooting for you eccles yep eccles eccles I call him eccles sometimes <laughs> we're buds yeah all right one last matchup today before starts of the week the rams at six and six take on the nine and three baltimore ravens baltimore heavy home favorite seven points over unders 40 yikes that opened at 44 it's gone down the weather is pushing it down some are calling for sustained winds of 25 miles an hour gusts up to 45 uh, Gus is up to 45? Nope, gut, gusts. Oh. Gu Gus doesn't get up to 45. Oh, man. The Gus, the bus Gus gets bus up to 45. <laughs> get out of his way. Um, So, you know, it's, it, it, it turns everybody in the passing game into a tremendous risk in this one. Lamar Jackson has been a risk anyways. He's got one top 12 finish and five starts. He doesn't have his best pass-catching weapon in Mark Andrews. He... 
has a 35% snap count Odell Beckham. He has an inconsistent not practicing due to illness Rashad Bateman. And he has Zay Flowers, who, much like Elijah Moore, needs a billion targets to really be productive. Some people were asking the Zay Flowers question earlier this week. How are you feeling about Zay? Uh, feeling okay-ish that he is not what we had hoped from the beginning of the year, but he is still um, – it, it's kind of like when we were talking about Jerome Ford, which is like I have my concerns about the player and his production, but – in the in the field that I think that Zay Flowers is still a flex play. Yeah, when it comes to there, there's four guys here that are in the passing game that I think will end up with a PPR decent game, not great with this weather. But Zay Flowers, Isaiah Likely, Puka, and Cooper Cup are all heavily involved in the screen games where they're you know the, the manufactured touches, and that's going to be necessary if there's 25 mile an hour winds gusts up to 45 obviously the defenses are going to know that they're they're not going to be playing for the deep shot and so these screens aren't going to be super valuable but I do think that those guys are you know that that short area of the field where you can actually throw the ball to the teams are going to be implementing more of that we've seen that a lot with Zay Flowers I, I trust McVeigh to get the ball into the hands of Puka however he can maybe some handoffs to these type of players as well I don't I don't love any of them. If you've got a great option, if you're, you know, loaded, uh, you know, like I've, I've got a Megalobowl team where I've got Puka, but I've got, you know, five good options, he'll be on my bench. Um, but I, I don't think you have to bench them because these are smart coaches that'll get the ball into the hands of their, of their playmakers. But the running backs are, you know, when, when the passing game goes away, it's because you're handing the ball off more and more opportunities to both sides. I'm not excited for the 16.5 implied point total Rams at all in this game. Baltimore is one of the best defenses in football at home, in the weather, dirty game, high upside for that defense, for Baltimore's defense. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm like, I'm factoring that heavily. If this weather comes to fruition on Sunday morning, I you're playing Kyron with tempered expectations. Mm-hmm. Puka with a prayer in Cooper Cup. I I don't know, man. Cooper Cup. I would rather pivot off of. Like I would start Puka over Koopa. Koopa Puka over Koopa. Uh, I would start Puka Nakua over Cooper Cup because Cooper is still dealing with this ankle injury. He hasn't completely looked himself. Uh, Puka has just been better. Drake London over Cooper. I would Cup? play Drake London over both of those guys. All right. Um. Any, you know, Isaiah Likely? Yeah. Yeah, I would play Likely. The matchup, it doesn't get better than the Rams. It's just a matter of whether or not they're going to be able to exploit the middle of the field with the weather. Hopefully they are. And Kyle is dealing with a super important start sick question we have to answer. Lamar Jackson or Brock Purdy? Brock Purdy. Yeah, that's Purdy for me. Purdy easily. What a world. Yeah. All right, into the starts we go. Welcome to Starts of the Week, presented by Purina Pro Plan. Well, I'll go first. My start of the week is Brock Purdy. <laughs> nice. He is currently the favorite to uh, win the league MVP, but you might be struggling to start Purdy over some other more high-profile fantasy options. Here are the quarterbacks I would start over Purdy this week. Dak, Tua, Jalen Hurts, Josh Allen. That's it. Maybe Patrick Mahomes, if you know, if 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 the weather looks good there, which right now it 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 appears okay, then. But he's in that tier right now. He's the number one in expected points per passing attempt. He's got the second highest yards per attempt of all time at nine point six. The Forty ers just put up thirty one points against Seattle uh, on Thanksgiving, and this time they are at home. The weather seems fine there on the West Coast, so Brock Purdy should be started if you have him unless you have one of those other guys. Which one of those other guys is Tua against Tennessee. The recipe for the Dolphins' yeah. success this year, they beat up the bad teams. They're at home. 30.3 team implied total. That's a struggle to find this week with the weather. And, you know, Tua's end of season schedule didn't look amazing heading into the fantasy playoffs, but he's been producing. You can't stop Tyreek. Big plays around the corner. You got A-Chan in the passing game now. Um, I think Tua's going to be a weak winner again. And I have confidence 
in Justin Fields this week against Detroit. They are 29th in schedule adjusted points to the quarterback position. The last three games uh, facing the Lions, Justin Fields on the ground, 18 for 104, 10 for 132, 13 for 147, and two tutties. The He hasn't been – we we haven't seen that – oh, he's back. I mean, he did, I believe, had 100 rushing yards, but still not a tremendous fantasy output. But in this matchup, whether – Approving, I think that Fields gets back into the uh, that more top tier of a fantasy quarterback. I I agree with you. I think Fields is a is a pretty good start this week at running back. I've got Joe Mixon versus the Indianapolis Colts at home. Mixon last week got into the end zone twice. We're going to see what Jake Browning's got. Uh, he he just has one of the most secure roles of any running back in football. Eighty eight percent of the team's rushing attempts. That's second only to Josh Jacobs. Eighty one percent of the team's running back targets he's on pace for 323 opportunities and the Colts matchup is great they've allowed the third most rushing touchdowns on the season 133 rushing yards per game that's the seventh most Joe Mixon is a great play this week well I'm staying in the same game I'm I'm jumping on board the Dolphins Devon HN you need him in there um when he plays a football game good things generally happen you know the he made it through unscathed, as far as we know. Two touchdowns last week. There are, I mean, blowouts. You see Mostert get time. He's the veteran. He needs time off so that the playoffs are a thing that Miami can hang around in. And so Achan got every opportunity in the second half, minus about four snaps from Mostert. It it just means very very good things. And Tennessee has been a red light green light against running backs. They've had a handful of really good performances, and then. Over the last month, a handful of really bad ones. I love HN this week, so I'm going to get in on that. My running back start of the week, it's a plug and play, as in plug your nose and play him. It is A.J. Dillon against the New York Giants on Monday night. Wow, no undies for that one? He's been a top 24 running back in three straight weeks. You don't put titanium underpants onto A.J. Dillon. It makes him slower. <laughs> yeah, we Commando need, is the way he needs to go. They don't make him that big we, we need to aerodynamic him as much as possible. Yeah. Uh, the last three games where he's been top 24, 18, 17, 19 opportunities. <laughs> And he, Sorry. Get, he gets to play the Giants, who are 28th in schedule adjusted points to the running back. They've allowed 19 or more fantasy points to opposing running backs in five straight games. New England, Washington, Dallas, Vegas, the Jets. So I think that you are I think you have a safe running back two with AJ Dillon. And he could Ooh. hey, he could score a touchdown. I doubt it. Yeah, I'm not. He could. He could. He could do it. He could do it. Yeah. All right. I doubt it, too, but he could. (laughs) Uh, Wide receiver, I've got Brandon Cooks at home against the Philadelphia Eagles. Dak Prescott's ascension. It's also been correlated with Brandon Cooks being a legit fantasy wide receiver, too, over the last two months. Since week six, he's a top 24 wide receiver in five of seven games. He's the... Yeah! It's back. Uh, he's the wide he receiver that drop. 13 in total fantasy points during that span. He's the wide receiver 17 in fantasy points per game. The matchup against the Eagles is juicy. They are dead last in schedule adjusted fantasy points allowed to quarterbacks. Uh, the total yeah. is 52 for the over under Dallas. They've got a dome and it's so cool because <laughs> they're going to be able to throw without. It's, well, it's, it's not cool. Jay. It's actually room temperature oh very nice um so the matchup is great I mean this is a player like Brandon Cooks I would start over all these other bad weather you know Cooper Cup and Puka Nakua and what are you going to do with the weather and Garrett Wilson like I am so <clears throat> mad that this game is not the first week of the fantasy playoffs next week mm. oh. I because I have Dak CD and this is just it doesn't matter to you it doesn't it matter to me this week I'm just watching it I just stay healthy but it's I it's going to be such a bonanza I'm very jealous, and Cooks is a great play. I'm going with the risky Garrett Wilson against Houston. The Wilson-to-Wilson connection resumes. Not that it was special, but um, 10 targets, 65 receiving yards, that's been the average when Wilson's been out there. The ceiling, it's never very high with Zach Wilson, but he has a ton of targets. The target share is great. Houston been bleeding fantasy points to opposing passing games. They're 26th. I think Garrett Wilson can go back into your lineup. And my wide receiver start of the week, it's Cortland Sutton against the Los Angeles Chargers. He is a touchdown machine right now. 
And this matchup, look, the Chargers allowing the fifth highest rate of explosive pass plays in the NFL. And Cortland Sutton has 10 receptions of 20-plus air yards that is tied for fifth in the NFL. A defense that allows explosive plays, a wide receiver, that that's what he is living on this year. I think he scores another touchdown. My tight end start of the week is Cole Komet uh, at home against the Detroit Lions. Komet is quietly the tight end six on the year. He's on pace for 79 receptions, 683 yards, seven touchdowns on 96 targets. And the Lions defense is kind of unraveling over the last month. They're allowing 30.3 points per game. That is 30th in the NFL. They rank 25th in schedule adjusted fantasy points allowed to the tight ends. And last time that we saw Cole Komet at home against Detroit last year, he was the tight end one on the week. Seven targets, 74 yards, two tutties. So Cole Komet seems like a, a decent play this week. I am going to target one of the weakest tight end defenses in football 27th in schedule adjusted fantasy points allowed to tight ends I am targeting the tight end position uh, that ranks seventh in fantasy points scored sixth in receiving touchdown six in yards per reception and that is going to be Brevin Schultz or Dalton Jordan <laughs> I like it um it's going to be Brevin Jordan if Dal Dalton Schultz sits again and it's going to be Dalton Schultz the doctor if he is active so I'm going Houston tight end as my start of the week I'm going with Isaiah Likely against the Rams. Uh, before the bye week, we saw six targets for him. Didn't turn into a whole bunch of production, but he's running a bunch of routes, uh, the second most on the team in that game, lining up in the slot a whole bunch, and the, the matchup with the Rams is fantastic. They've allowed 60-plus yards or a touchdown to every tight end over position over the last nine games, except uh, you know the Steelers when the Muth was on IR and the Seahawks, but... Uh, L.A., 32nd in schedule adjusted points to the tight end position. It's a great matchup. I I know that the weather stinks, but if I don't have a top-tier tight end and I'm trying to find someone likely is there, and likely is, I think, still pretty available likely's, on people's waiver wires. Likely is going to start for like three of my seven leagues this, this there you week. Go. Uh, thanks again to our sponsor. Starts the week. It's over, but uh, we want to thank Purina Pro Plan Sport. Pro Plan Sport provides fine tuned nutrition for strength and stamina that enables dogs and owners to take on life's adventures together pro plan sport high performance fuel for active dogs it all starts here jason moore's ironclad locked and loaded 100 percent guaranteed boom boom kicker of the week last week on boom boom kicker I rode a weather balloon face to face with Young Wei Ku. <clears throat> a brouhaha broke loose, for Ku kicked me in the caboose. But thankfully, I have a 101 butt. Before it became illegal, I used the tush push like the Eagles, KOing him and Jake Elliott. I thought the uh, that was incredible. This masterpiece, right? Was, the rhymes in that one, very nice. Thank you. I thought that we had. Uh, I thought last week was the kind of like series finale. No, I'm hoping this is the season, the, the series finale on the season. You hope every time we do it, it's the last time. It yeah. might. It might. We may be well, reaching that I point. Think, I think we once you've peaked and you've reached the pinnacle. Once eighty to ninety percent of all your rhymes are butt related. But that is normally there. the end of a... Um, but he has a 101, but... Yeah, yes, I do. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. He's seen it. <laughs> oh, gosh. Goodness gracious. Let's it's got shut strong it. strong cheeks. Let's shut it down. Speaking of, um, well, Mike, he has the shame tomorrow. Huzzah. And we'll uh, give you the rest of the matchups as well. Tune in tomorrow. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.